The Sigma 65mm f2 DGDN contemporary lens is an all-metal, compact, affordable prime lens that you can buy for E-mount or L-mount. And today we're going over exactly what I like and dislike about this lens. So you guys ready? Let's get to it. So the first thing I noticed about the 65mm and the 35mm i-series lenses when I bought them is how small and compact they are. They're just tiny little lenses that are easy to throw on your camera, get your gimbal balanced, and just go run and gun, and I really like that. The next thing you'll notice is it's striking aesthetic. It's a very asymmetrical cinema lens looking design. It has deep grooves in the aperture and focus rings and it's an all metal design. Even the lens cap and the lens hoods are aluminum. Now, it does come with a normal lens cap, which is plastic, and I use that one more than the magnetic metal lens cap, but you do have the option to use the magnetic ones if you want. Sigma even sells a little carabiner kind of thing that carries the metal lens cap when you have it off the lens instead of having a metal lens cap bouncing around in your camera bag. I don't want a little aluminum disc bouncing around and potentially scratching everything in my camera bag, so I just don't carry them with me. I just use the plastic ones. I swear to God, there's like a guy at the end of my street on a radio like, hey, he, start, he started recording his talking head part. Drive past his house really fast. All of you, go. And like, there's like helicopters flying over my house and motorcycles driving by. So as I said, the 65mm f2 is part of the i series of lenses from Sigma. This includes the 35mm, which I'm filming on right now, and there's also a 45mm f2.8 and a 24mm f3.5. I chose the 65 and the 35 because they're the faster two of the bunch, but there's a caveat to that. I gotta cut in here and redo this part of the video because I made a mistake that I need to fix. And you guys told me down in the comments the first time I posted this video that my lens is messed up or it actually is sharp and blah, blah, blah. Basically what happened was I said that the 65 F2 and the 35 F2 Sigma i-series lenses are a little bit soft when they're in F2 and then they sharpen up when you get to F2.8. I was flat out wrong about that. I'm constantly working on like five videos at once. I'm watching thousands of reviews to stay current in the camera scene and give you guys the best show and the best information that I can. I wasn't trying to be like disingenuous or anything weird like that. I'm not a corporate shill. I wish that I had corporate shill money, but I'm just a guy that makes mistakes and I messed this one up because I was thinking of a completely different lens. I can't believe that I'm doing an apology portion because I said a lens was soft. You know what? It is soft and you're soft, bitch. But seriously, it's like, it's razor sharp. I don't know why I said it was soft. Like I'm just stupid or something. This lens is gonna run you about $700 new. It comes in Sony E-mount or Leica L-mount and you can buy it on the used market for as low as $550. I've seen it without damage, but it is a newer lens, so don't expect to find them for super cheap. One of my gripes with this lens is when you put it on the camera, a lot of the time I find that I spin the aperture ring out of black. Like it'll end up at F16 or F22 just by nature of the direction that it goes. When I'm turning it onto the Sony camera body, I just always spin that aperture ring for some reason. This also happens on the 35 millimeter. It's just the nature of the design of these lenses because the aperture ring spins to the left. Sony lenses go on clockwise. You just always seem to spin the aperture ring. Another thing is there's no de-clicking switch on this lens. So your aperture ring is always gonna make that noise no matter what. And I mean, I don't really mind because I don't normally use the aperture ring when I'm shooting video, but it's just, if you do a lot of like aperture pulls or whatever it's called when you spin the aperture while you're filming, it's just something to consider. There's no de-clicking switch here. Oh my God, am I sweaty enough? This lens is like covered in sweat right now. It's really hot in here. You have a gigantic light in front of your face. You just like sweat no matter how cool it is in the room. And I can't run the AC because that'll ruin the audio. Christ. While we're on the subject of the outside of this lens, I'm just gonna go over the whole outside real quick. So on the back, as is the norm, you have your brass mounting plate, 
you have a little rubber gasket around the edge of that mounting plate, which is your weather sealing ring. On the side here, you have your autofocus, manual focus switch. The only other thing is your aperture ring and your focus ring. And as is the standard with Sigma lenses, the focus ring feels awesome. It's super premium feeling. I almost never feel like I like lost where the focus is on it and it's just great. One of the odd things about this lens is that the front element is actually concave. So it's, stick, it's an Eni, it's not an Audi. So I don't know what that is, but it's just something that I noticed that's kind of weird about this lens. You might have noticed that I took everything off the lens. I don't really use that lens hood as I've said in previous videos. I don't use lens hoods. I'm sure that drives certain people up the wall, but I just don't like them. And plus, I'm almost always using an ND filter, so I just don't really have a use for lens hoods. If you find that you need shade from the sun or you're getting a real hard flare, try using your hand instead of the lens hood and maybe you'll be surprised at the results. The minimum focus distance on this lens is 21.7 inches, which isn't the closest in the world, but it's not very far either. For product photography, it's fine. I found that I run into very few situations where I want to get closer with this lens anyway at this focal length. You're not going to be shooting max macro photography with it, but it's close enough. By comparison, the 55mm Zeiss lens that I traded in for this lens was way further on the minimum focus distance. I can't be shooting a camera body from four feet away. It's just not doable. So if you're looking for something to do product photography with, you're not gonna be able to get that close with this lens, but close enough in my opinion. And while we're on the subject of focusing the autofocus on these lenses, I know a lot of reviewers say that the autofocus on these lenses suck, but I don't see it. It's super responsive. It's not silent, granted. I mean, it still makes a little bit of chirp when the motors are going in there, but like, it's not gonna be perfect. It's a tiny little affordable lens. You're not gonna get this amazing cinema quality autofocus. I mean, I don't even think cinema lenses do autofocus. You get what I'm saying. It is so hot in here, I don't have pants on right now. Let's get to that test footage. So my closing thoughts on this lens are between 50 millimeters and 80 millimeters, E-mount just doesn't have a lot of prime lenses. So you just don't have a lot of competition on this lens, especially at the price point. There's just not much that's going to match up to this thing. So I think it's going to stay in my kit for a while. As far as the I series in general, the 35 mil that I have may be getting traded in for the Sony F1.4 35 millimeter because it's comparable price, but it's F1.4. But anyway, that's been my review of the 65mm f2 DGDN Contemporary I-Series lens by Sigma. Holy crap, is that name long enough. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Sam Has a Spending Problem, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!